Well, welcome to another episode of Break Away from the Rat Race. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dustin Heiner. And Dustin is the founder of Master Passive Income, Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, and Successfully Unemployed. I love that, that word. Uh, he's a real estate rental property investor and professional who has, uh, was able to make enough passive income from his business and his rentals to quit his job when he was only 37 years old. This is very impressive. Uh, and he has a podcast, a YouTube channel. He has some, a couple of books. He has also a course that uh, we're going to talk about. And he also offers a coaching, which was something that was very uh, important for me when I got started in real estate. He now helps other people quit their job by in, investing in real estate rental properties and to live the life they are dreaming of. Dustin, welcome to the show. Hey, Eric. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I, I just really love how real estate's afforded. Now, real estate's great, don't get me wrong, but it affords me to do amazing things in my life, like not work a job, and I call it a job as a J-O-B, a just over broke job, because that's what <laughs> you're living. Um, but yeah, be able to get on great podcasts like yours and talk to great people like you. It's just a blessing to have real estate that affords me to do whatever I want in my life. So I appreciate you having me on. Oh, my pleasure. So I know that you have a lot to offer, and we talk a lot about, uh, you know, speaking of the job, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have a job right now, and uh, they're listening to us in, uh, or watching us in the evening or the weekend, which is the only time off they have, and then it's like, like they're listening to Dustin, and they say, how was he successfully unemployed? How did he go from a full-time job? How did he do that transition? What were the problems that he had to solve to do this? What was the good things? And of course, we know what the other, well, we can also talk about what the other side looks like when you are there, what does that look like? But let's talk about that transition from a full-time job to, to really spending 100% of your time on, uh, on real estate investing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'll quickly, and you mentioned this, I'll quickly jump to the end. When I was 37 years old, I was blessed to be able to quit my job because I had enough real estate making me money passively. You know, passive and income just coming in every single month that I could quit my job. But I'll quickly go back to the beginning. So when I was young or just all growing up, I've always been entrepreneurial, you know, business minded, always wanted to have my own business. Uh, but I was always taught and we're all taught this. What we do is we go to school, we get good grades. And yeah. then we go to college, get good grades, get in thousands and thousands of dollars into debt and get a piece of paper. It's called a degree. And you take that piece of paper, you try to find a job with it. And then after your you know, 40 years of working for somebody else, you hopefully retire when you're 65 or 70 years old on what you saved your entire life when you were just working that just overbooked job. And so I was doing that exact same thing yeah. all the while still trying to start businesses and stuff. And so when I was younger, I had a, a uh, newspaper route. That's where you ride around on your bike with newspapers and throw them at 5 a.m. and bang them on garage doors and wake people up. I had a graphic website design company. I had a skateboard manufacturing business. I even had a pizzeria and a convenience store that I started all from the ground up, but I was also working a nine to five J-O-B. I was working the county government in California, one of the counties there. I was doing IT work nine to five, and I bought one or two properties at the time and life got in the way. I knew I needed to become an investor. That's the right way to go, but life gets in the way, just like for everybody. And I gotta tell you this quick story of how I got catapulted into becoming a real estate investor. So after working there a number of years, you know, 10, 12 years at working at the county, I, my wife and I started having kids. And by the time we had our fourth kid, um, I went on paternity leave. So my wife had our child, our fourth child, I, I went on paternity leave. That's where the dad stays home with the mom, changes poopy diapers, you know, bonds with the baby and, you know, gets mommy food and all that sort of stuff. And about two weeks I'm off and then I go back to work. And that same week I get back to work. I get a call from my boss's, boss's, boss's secretary, like the top dog. His secretary calls me up and says, Dustin, would you please come to the office? And I said, sure. And then I hung up the phone and I paused for a second. I thought, my goodness, why in the world would they be calling me to the office? Like, this isn't normal. And I've seen plenty of movies. This is Friday at 3.30 in the afternoon. This isn't good. And on top of that, sitting there, I remembered a couple months before I went on paternity leave, there were some rumors or some rumblings going on that there could potentially be layoffs in the county because there was low like income or the, the, the taxes were getting lower. Yeah. And so I immediately shook that off. 
I said, there's no way because I went working for 12, 13 years. My boss is thinking I do a great job. Everything's fine. So I get up and I walk down the hallway to my boss's office. Now, Eric, the hallway isn't very long. And in fact, it's kind of short. But every single step that I took, it felt <laughs> like the hallway got longer and longer and longer. And it felt like my feet became lead bricks. And every step was hard to take because the weight of everything started crushing down on me that I could potentially lose my job. Well, I turn the corner and I see my boss's door. His door is closed and I look at his secretary and sheepishly, she kind of grins at me, consoling me with her eyes because she knows everything about what's going on. I know nothing about what's going on. And she says, yeah. Dustin, would you please have a seat? So I go and take a seat. And as I'm sitting there, I start thinking about my life and all this time working this J-O-B, you know, doing whatever he told me, get in debt, yeah. go to college, all that stuff and get a job. Was that all a waste of my life? And then I start, oh my goodness, we just had our fourth child. If I can't make money to provide for our children, mm. does that make me a failure as a father? Does that make yeah. me a failure as a husband, as a man trying to provide for his family? Well, as I'm sitting there, my hands get all clammy, my forehead gets all sweaty because getting so anxious and nervous that I will potentially get laid off. Well, the door to my boss's office opens up and out walks a lady, a coworker of mine, with a piece of paper in her hands. And she is noticeably distraught, noticeably upset, not wow. necessarily crying, but you could tell her world has been devastated. She walks past me and my boss says, Dustin, would you please come into the office? I get up and I go into his office and I get laid off. And wow. this is the government. Nobody gets fired or laid yeah, off from the government. Exactly. Yeah. But it, if it happened to me, it can happen to anybody. Well, I take that layoff notice and I walk back to my desk and I sit down in my desk and I realize two things sitting right then and there. And I, this is the reason why I tell the story so that everybody gets this. The first thing I realized was I need to get another job. I need to be able to provide for my family. So I was really, really blessed, praise the Lord, to be able to find another job in the same county, a whole other department. They weren't having the big issues of, of layoffs. And so I was blessed to transfer over there. So check, I got that one done. But sitting in that chair, the second thing that I realized I need to make sure that this never, ever happens to me again. I need to make sure that nobody has the ability to take away my ability to yeah. feed my family, put food on the table, put a roof over heads. So right then and there, I realized that I was making my value in my job. Because we all get this question. They say, Dustin, what do you do? I would normally say, oh, I work for the county. I do IT work at the county. No longer would I project my value as being my job. That's yeah. what we all do when we tell them what we do, our job is. That's our value. No, mm -hmm. our value or my value comes from my your, God. Or your from identity or from even. My exactly. Yeah. Who I am as a person. Yeah. So right then and there, I realized, because I knew I wanted to be an investor. Life got in the way, so I, I put it on pause. I right then and there said, I realized my value is now I am an investor. Now, it may yeah. so happen that 100% of my money comes from my job. That's now my part-time job. Yes. I'm a full-time investor. I'll fast forward the story. From that point, working at this new job, I was buying property after property after property, saving and sacrificing to buy the next property, each property making me a minimum of $250 a month or more in passive income. Remember, that's the minimum or more in passive income. Eventually, at 30 plus properties, after about five or six years of investing, I realized, my goodness, even though I'm making $75,000 a year here, I'm losing money. I better quit. So I round up the story by sharing. I went to my, my new boss, great boss and everything. I said, hey, boss, I'm laying you off. Here's your two weeks notice. And he looked at me and said, Dustin, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I don't have to do anything. I own real estate. It works for me without me doing a thing. And I'm not going to do a thing because I own real estate. So I, uh, I'll round out the story by sharing. If you remember that walk that I took to my first boss's office, mm -hmm. that was a short hallway that got longer and longer and longer. I walked away from my last job. I walked home to my car. Or, sorry, I walked to my car to go home. And what is fun is that I've taken this walk a thousand times. It's a mile and a half walk to my car because I was working <laughs> in downtown. I didn't want to pay for parking. And so I've taken this walk a thousand times. I felt like I was walking on clouds because I knew I would never, ever need another job again. So after investing, buying property after property, making money in passive income, now I literally don't work because I've created an automatic business. In fact, a lot of people have heard of the book, The 4-Hour Workweek. Yeah. I personally think working four hours a week is for suckers. I don't want to work four hours a week. <laughs> I don't want to work four hours a month. It is. 
I work maybe 30 minutes a month. And all I do is I pull out the statement from my property managers, look at it, make sure everything's good, put it away and go back to play with my kids. So mm -hmm. I'll pause everything because you probably got plenty of questions. Oh my God, I have a lot to unwrap. That's for sure. So I, I totally agree with you. I think, um, you know, I'm all focused on everybody's number one goal should be to achieve financial freedom, build that passive income portfolio. Everything is going to help. It's going to help in a couple of things. If you think your job is secure, uh, you know, even a government job, I thought these were pretty secure and that you wouldn't be fired from that. And uh, so, you know, get, getting laid off from a government job. So that's the most secure kind of job you can get. It I is. mean, <laughs> So if you can get laid off from that, then, you know, nothing is safe. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. So, and, but if even the financial freedom goal is so important. That's why it's, it's why it should be your number one goal is also because in, inevitably you're going to need to have that passive income when you want to retire. Uh, if you, uh, if, even if you're laid off and you want to get another job and you're, you're laid off for six months uh, and then, but that's going to help you can kind of like help you survive that period. If you really like your job, uh, if you want to stay and, you know, in the nine to five for some reason, but yeah, so this is uh, this, that whole aspect of, I don't want to invest because this is too risky and all of that. Oh, this is, it's, it's risky to have a job and be it on is. blindfolds and not think you about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're hundred percent right. It's more risky and I'm proof. It's more risky to have a job because they could take that away. And there's a saying, and I heard it when I was younger, and I immediately dismissed it. Oh, that's not going to be happening to me. It's here's a saying it's not if you lose your job, it's when it's going yeah. to happen. It happens to everybody. And I went to the government. I was like, no, there's no way. It's going to be risk proof. Like, I, I'm not going to have any risk. And obviously, I believe now it's so much more risky putting my hand, my life in somebody else's hands as opposed to in mine. I can take care of myself so much better than anybody else ever could or even would want to. Yeah, yeah. The other thing too is people always think that, oh, I'm going to retire at 65 or something. They have this number. And then, you know, there's only, there's less than 20% of the people actually are retiring at that, at that age. Mm -hmm. Most of them get laid off or, or yeah, get laid off prior to achieving that, that age. Or they don't so, have enough money saved up that they got to yeah. continue to work. So people don't, they think they know what, what age they're going to retire uh, with their job, but they don't know because this could be, this should be short circuited by, by their boss or by the, the company they're working for. So this is something to be, this is another reason why you need to do, to do that. Uh, you also talked about something about um, what I thought, you think about the job too, right? I mean, it's just like, you, people are get so focused on the job. I had a call with a good friend of mine um, yesterday and he was telling me, he said, oh, you know, I'm working so hard and stuff like that. I have like 30 minutes of a day, like just to think about, about myself and all of that. And I'm sitting on a pile of cash and I don't know what to do. And he was, it was a significant, <laughs> it was a significant pile of cash. Let me tell Music you. Music to my ears. <laughs> and then he had, uh, he was talking to these financial planner, like at, uh, you know, at Wall Street planners and stuff like that that and see how they're going to make their those fees. are the worst ones to talk to exactly so so i asked him that i said well you know are these like fiduciary do they have a fiduciary duty to you or are they working he said no they're working for that company i said well they're not working for you they're working for their commission and uh, so he realized that and just like but you need to help me i have all this money money that i need to invest but my point here is that when you're working full time the other thing you're not doing is focus on managing your money you have to look at your money, the equity in the assets that you have and have them work for you. This is how the wealthy people do it. They don't work. They focus on having their money and their equity and their assets work for them and generate the income that they need. Totally. Yeah. And that, that they store with that, the wealthy store their money in real estate. But the great thing is, we get so many benefits when we invest in real estate. I'll quickly go over the, I know you know these, I'll quickly go over the six ways that we make yeah. money when we're investing in real estate. First one is passive income. You know, I make $250 or more from every single property that I buy every single month. Then there's also um, equity capture. So when I buy the property, I buy it for less than it's worth. So I capture equity. There's also market appreciation. We know just over time, markets are gonna go up. Inflation, everything, it's just markets gonna go up. You have forced appreciation where you fix it up. You make it worth more than the money that you put into it. There's also tax benefits. I love depreciation. 
if nobody, I'll pause it by saying, yeah. if you have not experienced depreciation on your tax returns, it's amazing. It looks like you're almost making nothing, which is terrific. Yeah. Um, I also really, really love the um, mortgage pay down. And here's this is when I say this. So I don't pay my taxes. I don't pay my insurance. I don't pay my mortgage. I don't pay my property managers. I don't pay for repairs. I don't pay any of that stuff. My tenants pay for all that. And so mm-hmm. if you are buying a house with a mortgage, what's going to happen now is that you buy it, whatever down payment you're going to put down, hopefully you don't put much of a down payment down, then your tenants are paying all the principal and interest on top of that. So they're paying off all that for you. On top of that, you can refinance and pull the cash back. Anyways, there's so many ways to make money real investing in real estate that it's just, it's brilliant. But us wealthy people, what we do is we put it, our money, we store our money in real estate because that holds its value and goes up and we make a lot of money from it. Mm-hmm. And especially as we're heading in, uh, I'll, I'll let you talk on this because uh, especially as we're heading into a high inflation, I'm not going to say hyperinflation necessarily, but we're going into okay. high high inflation right now, and we are in it. Uh, last uh, last month it was like 8.5 percent or something like that. The CPI, um, and I think it's I think the reality is is, uh, is much higher than that. I think if we look at the, if the government is telling us 8.5, which we know the government always lies to us, yeah. if it's 8.5 in their lips, it's probably double that. At least I'm expecting double. Yeah, well, yeah, at least yeah. So so yeah, so this is another aspect of it too, is why how real estate is so good for inflation protection. Right. So so is that this is also another edge, and so. Um, and part of it is because your your rent is going up with inflation oh, yeah. and you know and then you have all that the appreciation obviously is going to go with that but also the mortgage that you're getting today is also you're going to pay down in tomorrow's dollars where so it's <laughs> going to be your loan is going to it looks big today maybe but in 10 years 20 years you're going to be laughing and say wow this is such a small loan well if you're paying Three percent, like you know, if you got a uh, mortgage before the rates have gone up, but it, let's just say you have a house, you buy a house, three, three and a half percent, maybe four percent uh, interest. If inflation is eight point five, ten percent, and like if that were to work out, you're actually making five percent by actually paying on a mortgage. It's just sad how yeah. inflation is literally going to destroy our dollar. But at the same time, there are ways to mitigate it. There are ways to actually use it for your benefit, like you said, getting a mortgage. I take a long time to pay off my mortgages. I get 30-year loans because the mortgage payments are lower, increases more passive income in my pocket for every single month, and then it pays it off over time for tomorrow's dollars, like you said. But when you buy one piece of property, you're, like I said, locking in the value of your money right then and there, but the value of that property now goes up all over time. It's an appreciating asset that makes you money over and over and over again, and especially if you rent it out, then you make money yeah. on top of that. But yeah, so I personally love putting my money. Like if anybody puts their money in just literally cash, like you put it in the bank or you just store it under your mattress or something like that, you take the cash out, it's dying. It's literally going to be dead yeah. really, really soon. In fact, if you pull out $100,000 next year, if it only stays at 8.5% inflation, then that's 8.5% off that $100,000. That's not that, that's the buying power. It's still $100,000. Yeah. But you can buy so much less. I mean, that's what ninety two uh, uh, five ninety two thousand five hundred uh, ninety two thousand five hundred dollars that you're going to have left to be yeah. able to. No, is that right? No, I'm wrong. Ninety one thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah. So yeah. that's just not worth that much. So we store it in there. We make money. We also get huge tax benefits, tax breaks on top of that. Everything combined, it's the way that wealthy people store their money. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, or so, think only, I'll, I'll quickly say one thing. Yeah. I, got, I just got to throw this in there. Bill Gates is probably one of the most wealthy men in mm-hmm. America. He owns 280,000 acres of farmland. Yeah, yeah. And he's very wealthy. That's where he's storing his money. Now, I'm not sure what he's going to be doing with all that. Hopefully good yeah. stuff. But at the same time, <laughs> 280,000 acres of yeah. land, that yeah. is storing your wealth. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so... When, when people are looking at this, they say, yeah, I understand Dustin. Yeah, that's what I want to do and stuff like that. But, you know, I don't really have a business mind. You said you were very business minded. When you, I'm not, I don't really get that kind of stuff. So how, how do you get over that, that kind of hump? Oh, that's a great question. So I'll, I'll say what I'm not. I am not a math person. In fact, numbers go into my brain 
and they flutter away. They literally like disappear out of my brain. So more than likely, everybody listening to this podcast is much, much smarter to me. I'll break it down. Very, very simple. If you want to invest in real estate, there's a couple things you need to learn. Number one, addition, subtraction, and multiplication. That's that's it. That's really all it comes down to, to being. Because again, I'm not that smart. Most of your people are much smarter than me. All I do is I account for all of my expenses. This is what a business would normally do. You make sure that you account for all of your expenses, your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance, your property manager fees, your uh, capital expenses, like things that need to be repaired, all that sort of stuff. You add all those up and then you get a total. Those are your expenses for this one thing that you have. Then you make sure that you could rent it out for more. So you add up all your expenses and then you make sure you could rent it for $250 or more. That's my opinion, $250 yeah. or more. Mm-hmm. And then with that, you subtract it, and that difference is your passive income. Now, here's what I, this is how I got to be able to get financially free, financially independent, was I realized if I work backwards, and I could eventually get rid of my job if I invest in real estate. So I went to my wife and said, hey, honey, how much money do we need in order to cover our expenses? Like, basically, what are our expenses? How much do we need? She said, okay, we need $4,200, mortgage, food, all that sort of stuff. $4,200 a month. I'm like, okay, I can work with that. Let me see if I buy one house at $250 a month, that's $3,000 a year in passive income. That's not working. If I bought 10 properties, that's $2,500 a month without working. That's $30,000 a year without working. 20 properties is $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year in passive income. And I realized if I got to uh, 20 properties or even like 18 properties, I could literally quit my job. And so Mm -hmm. if we scale the business now here, also, I'll quickly give you an understanding because you asked about if you don't have a business mindset. It's really not saying that you're going to be running a brick and mortar store or creating an Amazon. It's nothing like that. It's really super simple. And this is how we do it. What we do is we build the business first, and that is by hiring experts that are there on the ground. Now, if you listen to quote unquote gurus or like people that try to just sell this stuff for a living, what they're going to tell you is this. Find it anywhere in the country to invest and you find a property. You're going to buy that property, and that's going to be your business. That's completely wrong. You don't buy a property. That's not your business. Our businesses own property, and this is what it looks like. This is what they tell you. I'll, I'll quickly tell you what they tell you, and this I'll show you the wrong right way after this. This is the wrong way. Find an area of the country to invest. Run the, find a property. Run the numbers on it. Make sure you're making $50 a month in passive income or more because passive income is good, but they, they like appreciation. I don't invest for appreciation. In fact, if you could look in the video, my kids right here, I have four kids. I'm yeah. literally going to be giving these properties to my kids. This is generational yeah. wealth that I'm, so mm-hmm. I don't worry about appreciation. But they tell you, find an area, find a property, run the numbers, then spend thousands of dollars to fix up the property, yeah. then spend thousands of dollars to, or first thousands of dollars to buy it, then thousands of dollars to fix it up. Then you find a tenant, then you find a property manager. Well, in my opinion, that's just about backwards. What we do is we build the business first. And let me give you, before I jump into how to do it in real estate, I'll give you an analogy of what it looks like in a convenience store. So if you're going to start a convenience store, you know, a convenience store, caddy bars, soda machines, and stuff like that, you're not going to sign a lease on a location, open the doors, and put a box of candy bars there on the ground. No, you wouldn't do that. You go out of business in two seconds. What you would do, though, is you would get you would build the business first. You get the gondolas. Those are shelving units. You get countertops, cold storage, fountain machines, bank accounts, cash registers, insurance, employees. You'll do all of that before you bought any inventory. Once you have that built, that's when you buy the inventory and put it into your business. Same thing with real estate investing. Remember, the gurus tell you, you buy a property, that property is your business. No, 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 no. Our business owns inventory. We buy properties. That's inventory that we put into our business. That's how we can scale the business so well. So what we do, we first start with an area of the country. I, we invest all over the country. I invest, I, and sorry, in fact, I invest in Arizona, Ohio, and Texas. I have students that literally invest all over the country. Midwest is really, really good. The Carolinas and the Florida, really, really great areas of the country to invest. But what we do, we find a city that has good inventory. Remember, like you're not going to start a convenience store if you can't buy inventory. So first, we make sure we can have inventory. Look at a city, make sure they have the right properties at the right price range that you can buy and have good rents that makes you $250 a month or more. That's inventory that you're going to look for. Once we know there's a city has good inventory, then we pause looking at properties. In fact, a lot of my students, the first mistake they do is they say, hey, Dustin, we found an area of the country, the city that we're going to invest in. I've already got five realtors looking at properties for me. I say, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. That's the last step. 
Deals are the last step. The first thing that we do is we're gonna build a business because you're not gonna start a convenience store and then buy the inventory or you know, start looking at buying and putting an in inventory before you do anything. No, you're not gonna do that. So what we do is we pause on inventory because we know this is the area we're gonna invest. Then we start looking for property managers. This is the biggest key, yeah. but what everybody skips over. In fact, I have a YouTube channel where I literally code, like it's just me teaching step-by-step -step how to do this investing yeah. thing that I do. And the most watch, oh, I'll pause that. The least watched videos are the property managers, how to find the right property managers, how to manage them, how to make sure that they're making you money and not stealing from you, all that sort of stuff. Those are almost never watched. What are watched, how to get financing for properties and how yeah. to find properties for, yeah. you know, like off market properties. Those are watched to death, but the other ones are not. The yeah. ones that they need. So what they want is not what they need. What they need to learn. And so this is what you start with, finding the right property manager. Just like your quarterback in mm -hmm. your, your, your sports team, your football team, they make you money. They protect you. They make sure that your business is running. Just like if you had a convenience store, you're not going to find somebody off the street and say, hey, you manage my business. No, you yeah. interview them. Same thing with property managers. We interview property managers. I suggest personally interviewing many property managers and texting is not an interview. Email is not an interview. It's either a phone call or a Zoom call because yeah. somebody can easily make up, you know, if you email them, they'll look up the answers and then send it to you. You want to know if you're talking on the phone, just like you're interviewing for an employee, that they know yeah. what they're talking about. So I suggest multiple interviews with a property manager. So business-wise, property manager, absolutely number one. The second one would be your financing. How are you going to finance? So the first one is how to manage. Next one is how to finance. And I've literally done, I've counted them, like 14 or 15 different ways to finance a property. Everything from a conventional loan to private money, hard money. Um, let's see. I've even done bundle loans, commercial yeah. loans. Mm -hmm. I've done signature loans where I walk into a bank and say, hey, bank, can I borrow money? Oh, sure, here's an unsecured line of credit. It's a high interest, but I still, it's a business. I made sure I made that money. I've even used a credit card. Now it's an advanced strategy. Whoa. I have even used a credit card <laughs> to buy properties. But here's the reason why, Eric, that I was able to do that is because I knew my business. I knew that that expense of that high interest rate credit card would be accounted for and my tenants are paying for it now, Fast forward now, I don't have that credit card anymore because I paid it off, but I still mm -hmm. have the house and it's making yeah. me money. So yeah. when you talk about business, it's really, really simple when you break everything down, how to manage, how to finance, how to find tenants. Like we just break those down and that's something I love to do. And in fact, I just love sharing. I, I, I give, literally give away my real estate investing course, literally give it away for, for free because mm -hmm. I just want to show people how to do this because I'm just like your next door neighbor that figured out how to do yeah. this. And I'm just trying to give it away. <laughs> Yep. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, if you want to talk about it, I know, I know you have that course that, um, how oh, yeah. do people get to that, uh, that real estate course that you you're giving for free? Oh yeah. So you can text the word rental R E N T A L to three, three, seven, seven, seven rental to three, three, seven, 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 or go to masterpassiveincome.com mm -hmm. forward slash free course, masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course. I'll literally show you how to find an area of the country to invest, how to build the business, the step-by-step -step process to finding the right properties, making sure you're making $250 or more, how to scale the business so you can quit your job. But yeah, I just love, I love, honestly, now that I quit my job, it's become such a passion of mine to see so many people quit their job and buy their first property. In fact, I love it. When my students buy their first property, I love it even more when they quit their job. Like their goal is to not or to be successful and employed. It feels yeah. like I've done it all over again. So I'll just give that out to everybody. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's gonna be more more people that uh, we can hang out with, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to wait for your friends that are still working. So I'm just like I know, I know they're they're all working. I'm like, come on, guys, let's go play golf or let's go, <laughs> you know, go to lunch, and they they can't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, so this this is very good, and it's, it's the same. That's how that's how I got started as well. I mean, the first thing is that I didn't find a market. We wanted to uh, I wanted to kind of know which market really where my numbers would work. Uh, kind yeah. of because I wanted to identify the, the product, the investment properties that I want to buy just to make sure that I would made money. So there was some areas that, you know, I was in San Francisco at the time. It, I couldn't find anything that made sense over there. So I had to go out of state to look at things. So finding the right market for me. And then the very next step was finding the property management company um, to help us manage because I didn't want to, I didn't want to manage the properties. I, that's for sure. Mm -hmm especially when it's out of state. So finding that property management company, that, that was essential. 
and uh, finding someone that was also in line with in line with what we were trying to do. So by that, I mean property management company that if if I'm doing single family rentals, if the property management company is doing like, you know, 100 unit apartment buildings and stuff like that, and it's just like, they're not going to pay attention to me with five, 10 houses when I get started. So I don't want that. So he's finding the right size property management company, the right, mm -hmm. uh, the property management company also that is dealing with this, dealing with the same kind of, uh, of properties that you're dealing with, because sometimes there's some, some different challenges with single family rentals that that you don't get uh, with apartment buildings and vice versa. Yep. So, so that was very interesting. And having a conversation. So many of these property managers don't even return their phone calls. I mean, it's just like... No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> so you want a property management company that's going to be responsive. If they can't respond for a sales to sell more of their business, and, and then what are they going to do when I have a problem? When I want to, uh, I, I have a questions on my owner statement and I want some clarification, like how is that going to work? So responsiveness for, for me is like, it's uh, is very, very important. I 100% agree. Yeah. Uh, I, I usually request a, and I, well, in an interview, I usually ask them and I tell them 24 hour turnaround is what I require on communication. So if I text you, if I email you, if I get a phone call, I require that. Can you adhere to that? If they can't, I'm like, well, I'm sorry. Then I can't work with you because it, it non-communication in my world, my business, it, I just start pulling my hair out because yeah. this is my money. This is how yeah. I feed my family. It's not a hobby for me. This is my yeah. business. And so if you can't communicate, then I get somebody else. Yeah, there's no there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to to respond within 24 hours. Yes. And so absolutely. Yeah, no reason. Totally agree. Uh, so I, uh, the other thing too that I thought I found uh, interesting, again, kind of going back to, I guess I'm going to go back to the job for a few minutes because I think that's important. And it's kind of like the idea of the identity and what you see your value. You were kind of like, you would go and introduce yourself as, oh, I'm an IT guy and stuff like that. I'm working for the government. And just like, then people will probably walk away. <laughs> Two things they don't like, yeah, they IT, <laughs> IT and government. So there's like, oh, yeah. Both. nice to see yep. you, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but to me, that that was something in terms of mindset. It was like I always saw my the job. I was also an independent contractor, like for twenty years um, in in IT as well, and um, and uh, basically, I always saw that uh, saw that I was it was still a business. So when I was an independent consultant, obviously that was that was a business, but it was also kind of like a job wrapped up in a business. Mm -hmm. But when I introduced myself, I was always saying I was an investor, I was a real estate investor, or I was an entrepreneur and stuff like that. That was my main, my main gig. And then, and then everything else was that that was my identity was the, the entrepreneur, the entrepreneur, and then everything else was a side gig of oh, being an IT, IT guy, I that's just I, I do that to pay the bills. Because sometimes you go, you go to these meetups, uh, and then that's how people don't know how to introduce themselves and stuff like that. You know, introduce yourself as a, a new new real estate investor uh, uh, if you're just getting started, and and say, so, and that's it. That's what that's what the fo the focus on the conversation should be. Not that oh yeah, I'm an IT guy, and then you start talking about about uh, IT stuff. That's not what you want. You want to talk about real estate. You want to learn about real estate, and make connection in that um, in that direction. So that's why that job is your side gig until you can make it as a real estate investor. Well, I also want to add the reason why we do this is because not just for ourselves, which is great. Obviously, that's like the mm -hmm. number one reason for ourselves, ourselves. So we make sure that we're pushing forward. But also, my business, my real estate investing business, got so much better when everybody that I knew, knew that I was investor and every new person mm. knew that I was investor. I got so much more people, so many more people like either want to sell me a property or want to rent a property or give me money to invest because they're like, oh, you do that? Well, yeah. I want to invest. How about I give you some money so you can invest my money? Yeah. It's mm. so much better when people know that you're an investor. Just like if you if you had any business that you're trying to get a, you know, word of mouth out, if nobody knows about it, it's not going to do any good. Yeah. But now, because I have my podcast, my YouTube channel, and I coach and all that sort of stuff, and I literally tell everybody I'm an investor, because I do that, I get so many people. Like I have, I have a spreadsheet of people saying, 
I want to give you money. Whenever you're going to invest, call me up. I'll give you money to invest. It just makes everything so much better when people know that you're an investor. Yeah, exactly. And people are very helpful. Everybody is uh, wants to help, it seems. Uh, it's a very, uh, you know, I live yeah. in the world of, uh, of abundance. Uh, and, you know, it's just like it flows through and then you help other people, other people help you. And uh, it's it's wonderful. That's that's a fantastic point. And honestly, the reason and you, you um, when you were going through my bio, I created a conference called the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference. Mm -hmm. And it was specifically that because I remember back in 2006, when I first started investing, there was nothing like this. There was no podcasts, no YouTube channels. There was nothing about how to do it. It was just the gurus. That's all there was. And then fast forward to now, I've had hundreds of students that I've coached and I have them asking me, hey, we want a meet up. We want a place where we can get all everyone together for Master Passive Income. And I thought, you know what? I'm not that egotistical to have a conference around myself, but I know there are lots of ways to invest. It could be uh, single family. It could be multifamily. It could be Airbnb. It could be land investing. It could be storage units. How about we get all these investors together where we all mm -hmm. just bring our communities together? So I've, I've had lots of friends um, who are investors that do different things. And I said, let's put a community together where it is all about helping, just like what you were saying, helping each other. And so it was great in March this last year, and it's going to be every March. Um, it's called the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference. With that, we had 250 people there, 30 speakers, 15 sponsors, but it was a no sales pitch conference. If you've gone to any of those Google yeah, things, yeah, yeah. they're saying, run to the back and go. We're going to take the first thousand people. Instead yeah. of $100,000, it's going to be you know 50,000 or 20,000 or whatever. None of that. It's yeah. literally community, building relationships and helping each other. And it was a blast. I absolutely loved having that Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference. And with that, everybody, like literally everybody says, you're gonna do it again, right? Next year, because they knew. <laughs> I was like, I, I said, I had to beg my wife because it's a lot of money for a hotel to yeah. put on a conference. And I, after everybody loved it, I said, let's do it again, because you're right, Eric. Having a community of other people that are helpful, it makes yeah. investing so much better. I started, you probably started the same, just like me, with having nobody around you and having to figure it out on your own. That was horrible. Mm -hmm. I hated that. Now, if you yeah. have other people around you, it makes investing so much better. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, the other thing too that I find, so that's probably going to be our last point as we're approaching the, the wrap up time. Um, it's people are looking at this and say, well, oh yeah, I need to buy, like, invest like millions of dollars in real estate and it's going to be like love, you know, it's, I don't have that kind of money. I don't have, it's too, too complicated. And, uh, and this is what people don't realize is that, it, you, you know, you buy these single family rentals. I mean, we, that's what, that's what I do as well that, you know, I sell these turnkey single family rentals, each of them, they make about $250 a month in net cash flow. So if you're wondering, ah, oh, where can you find properties that make $250 a month in net cash flow? Well, there are, there are plenty of them. And uh, there are. that's, that's what we do. Uh, you know, we do that in the Midwest and we don't have any problems, mm -hmm. uh, you know, selling these, these types of properties. But the other thing too is that once you know that you have a property that can make that and you can find a lot of those, then you realize that, well, I don't need that many properties, right? I need like, if I need to make like uh, $6,000 a month, uh, well, I need like what, you know, 20, 30 properties in order to, uh, to achieve financial freedom. I buy a couple of properties uh, a, a year and uh, I'm able to, to achieve that in, you know, probably, probably earlier than 10 years, but uh but you know, at least at least within ten years, you should be able to have enough passive income because that it gets into a snowball effect. You start with one property, and that oh, yeah. that uh, two hundred fifty dollars a month adds up to you know three thousand dollars more that you have available, and then you know plus your saving plus blah blah blah. Then after a couple of years, you're able to buy two properties, and then you're able to buy four properties a year, and then and there you are. You know, and you're right. You're nine, and, the key is and then you have spend, twenty properties. You're absolutely right. And the key is to not spend that profit that you're making on your properties because yeah. you know I can use that to buy more properties, which will then make me more money to buy more properties to make me more money to buy me more properties. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you have the tax advantages as well. So that okay. actually reduce yeah. your taxes. That money should that money that you save can also go into the uh, this. So my point here is the goal is not that far away. If you buy these single family rentals and, um, you know, that are generating about $250 a month, 
you know, you can get there very quickly within 10 years, I would say even five years, if you're very aggressive and uh, you can be financially free as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Dustin, any famous last words as we are wrapping this up? I would say the biggest thing that I do is build the business and create passive income. Now, what's great when you become successfully unemployed, that's 40 plus hours of your life back. Because yeah. remember, your boss is just paying you paying you just enough to keep you working without quitting, but not so much money is taking money out of their pocket. The sooner you can get out of doing that, working for somebody else, the sooner you can create businesses, the sooner you can get more investments, the sooner you can make more money for yourself to yeah. make more money. Now I have literally, I think four or five companies now that make me money passively. It just keeps coming in because I know that I focus on passive income businesses. But at the same time, I store all my wealth in real estate. In fact, a lot of people have heard of streams of income. I love, I love streams of income, but they all flow into my river of income, which is my real yeah. estate. That's where yeah. I keep my money. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, Dustin, thank you very much. Uh, just maybe you want to talk about your uh, your course again, where they can uh, they can go and access your course, your free yeah, course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so if you text the word rental to 33 seven 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 rental to three three seven 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 or go to master passive income.com forward slash free course i'll give it to you um also have my podcast the master passive income podcast it's i really don't do interviews it's literally just me sharing like topics and like how to actually do this my youtube channel is the same way just me giving all this stuff out because i found the more people that i help the better my life gets in fact my new goal so my first goal was to quit my job in 10 years i was blessed to be able to do that then quickly after that, I made a new goal because I needed a goal in life. And I said, I want to create, I, I want to have a million dollars a year in profit from all my businesses. And I want to do that. That's my goal. But honestly, Eric, after about a year and a half, I realized I'm not motiv motivated by money. I have plenty of money. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. just that it was uh, something I could account for or like it's a quantitative number that I can hit. And I know I reached it. I hated it. Now my new goal is to help a million people to invest in real estate. That's why I just give all this stuff away for free. But my new goal is to help a million people to invest in real estate. The more people that invest in real estate, the better everything gets. Well, people, help Dustin achieve his goal and quit your job. <laughs> there we go. We can do it. <laughs> Thank you, Dustin. Best of luck. Thank you, Eric. Take care. Thank you for listening to Break Away from the Rat Race with your host, Eric Martell. If you want to share your story and experience with our listeners, please message us on Facebook at Break Away from the Rat Race. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast on iTunes.